is exactly how you get a level 7 on your IB Chemistry, HL, or SL exam. Hello everybody, my name is Joaquin Ravello and I got a perfect 45 in the IB Diploma and I also got a perfect 7 in my Chemistry exam a few years ago. And I'm also a current student at the UPenn Warden Dual Degree Engineering School. So, in today's video, let's hop down on exactly how to get a level 7. It's pretty simple, there's a three-step process that you want to follow, okay? Number one, you want to pre-study the chemistry material before your chemistry class begins, okay? This is where a lot of students go wrong. They go into their chemistry class not knowing at all what's gonna be covered or not knowing what is happening. And because of that, they waste so much time during school, during the entire day, just looking at the ceiling, trying to figure out last pieces of what's going on. The number one thing you need to keep in mind when it comes to really optimizing your routine is how can you optimize your school day? So I was just speaking to a cub the other day, by the way, in the training academy, link down below to join, that one of the reasons why she was struggling with the IB diploma was because she was behind on a lot of the work that she had to get done, right? She came to class and she did not understand what was being taught because she didn't know the content that preceded that, that needed to be understood in order to fully comprehend what was being taught. And because of that, she was struggling. She was behind. So what you need to understand is that if you lack the understanding of older content, that's what makes more advanced content difficult. The reason why more advanced content is taught later in the course is not necessarily because it's difficult, but instead because it requires a lot of the prerequisites you need to fully understand it. And those prerequisites only come from all of the studying, all of the understanding of previous units that was done beforehand leading up to the content that's being taught. So number one thing you need to understand is you need to come to class prepared. This is one of the largest opportunities for you to get time back because a lot of the studying that comes, especially when you're right before an exam, comes from trying to understand concepts that you should have understood and learned in the class. So there's a huge discrepancy there between the content you should know and the content that you missed out on simply because you weren't listening in class. And it's a tragedy because a lot of students fall so far behind on this simply because they don't pay attention to class. So number one, you want to set up a system for you to come prepared to class. This is why I suggest you spend no more than 15 minutes before getting to class of just pre-studying the content, all right? And if you do this for all the classes during the day, it takes maybe like 30, 40 minutes to just review all the content you're going to be covering during that day. And it makes your study time during the actual class session itself two to three times more productive, right? Have you ever gone to a, maybe it's a math class or chemistry or something in the IB and you just knew exactly what was being taught, right? Maybe you went to a math class and you're like, yeah, I covered this with my tutor. I know exactly what's being taught. You were on top of it. The teacher noticed, mind you, the teacher noticed that you were on top of it. You also felt more confident. You could finally see the intricacies of how the concept being taught related to all the other things you learned previously. It's two to three times X ROI on the same hour and a half that you're spending. So instead of spending an extra three hours in, in the future, trying to relearn and restudy and develop that deep comprehension, which is going to take two to three times as much as if you just understood it in class. You can basically save yourself three hours of study time by spending 15 minutes at the beginning of class, truly trying to develop a somewhat deep understanding of the content you're gonna learn during the day. So number one habit, spend 15 minutes studying for chemistry. So the resources that I suggest that I used, number one, his name was MSJ Chem. I love the way he says it, by the way, at the beginning of the video, he's like, MSJ Chem, like this is MSJ Chem. This is MSJ Chem. Something like that, but by the way, I'm so sorry if I just butchered that complete intro accent, but. I love this guy. He makes some excellent videos. Go check him out, MSJ Chem. Basically what I did is before I got to a chemistry class, I'd watch the MSJ Chem video on what we were gonna cover in class. And by the way, the excuse that I don't know what we're gonna cover, that's an invalid excuse, okay? You have the curriculum, you have the syllabus. One of the great things about the IB that is such a win compared to a lot of other state registered school tests and the rest of it is that you know exactly what's gonna be taught, right? You know exactly the curriculum from day one. So why don't you utilize that fact to your advantage? So you go to MSJ Chem, you check out his video, 15 minutes, you watch it, all right? Again, you can watch it passively or you can make it more productive by doing active work alongside that, right? So as you're watching the video, pause it and then think, try to truly understand, try to explain in your own words, maybe explain it to your brother or sister who's also on the bus, which I did sometimes trying to explain it as simply as I possibly could. Long story short, you want to watch the video and truly understand what is being taught, the concept that is being taught. That way, when you approach class, it just clicks right away. So MHA Chem is the one way to do it. The other person you can search up is Richard Thornley. Again, excellent videos. And basically what I did is I just downloaded all of his videos on YouTube on my phone with YouTube Premium and I just listened to that <laughs> while on the bus. And so that's for point number one. For point number two, this goes pretty closely with the previous one. You want to pay attention during class, all right? I can't say this, I can't stress this fact enough. Okay, you need to utilize your class time as effectively as possible. And there's two reasons why you wanna do this. Number one, as I mentioned before, it's gonna save you hours of study time in the future because a lot of you need to understand that a lot of the confusion that comes with study right the reason why a lot of students get poor marks is because they don't fundamentally understand what is being taught do you think for a second do you think if you truly understood the concepts that are being taught in class do you think that you would have that much
much trouble in the exam? The answer is probably no, right? If you truly deeply understood all the concepts in chemistry HL, do you think when you get to the exam, you would have that much difficulty? Maybe there's an argument to be made that the IB twists things in a certain way. Sure, I, I kind of understand that argument, but for the most part, if you have a deep understanding, again, the entire purpose of these exams is to test that understanding, right? To test that knowledge. So if you have a deep understanding, that's basically a prerequisite for you getting a good mark in the exam. So the question then becomes, how can we develop that as efficiently as possible? Well, it turns out that you can utilize the time you're already going to be spending. Mind you, you're already going to be spending the hour and a half in class, right? Like you're already going to be spending that time. There's no way around it. So you might as well use that time as effectively as possible. So what I suggest is the following sit at the front of the class, right? Pay attention to the professor, take as many notes and take as many active notes as possible. All right. There's a difference between writing things down because you're writing it and writing things down and trying to reword it in your own language. Okay. So that's number one. And then the other thing you got to keep in mind is that professors love students who respect them. Professors love students who want to learn. Professors love students who showcase that they're willing to actually understand the concepts that's being taught. Why? Because again, we're human. Professors are humans, right? And as humans, we have base traits and as humans, we want to feel respected, especially if we're in that mentor type of position, we want to feel respected as if we are the mentor. So if you, I don't want to say treat or act, but if you just act like that student in that role and you act as if I am trying to learn and become as good as possible, right? And you, and again, this isn't, this isn't an act as in, I just go in and try to like fake my way in it. This is you actually developing a curiosity so that it shows to the professor that you actually want to learn. And the thing is, if you just show that for the entire class, number one, it's more productive for yourself. So you make the most time out of it. Number two, the professor gets a good vibe from you. And because of that, he might even refer you to other professors professors in the network, right? Imagine a professor saw you in class paying attention. He goes to the professor meetup and then he talks to the other professors and teachers and she's like, damn, have you seen Johnny or have you seen Joaquin or have you seen how productive, how focused he is in class? Wow, it was amazing. And then everybody, and then your name kind of like floats around in the teacher circle because of just such how good of a student you are. All right. And I was able to do that in my own community where I became known as that productivity kid. And one of the ways I did that, by the way, was having a productivity mastermind session that I would give to other students. So I'd help other students inside the school become more productive. By the way, that's why I've also been doing this for such a long time. Long story short, my name kind of started floating around the entire teacher circle group. And then that created that like positive attraction within me. Like they saw Joaquin and they're like, damn, this guy's productive. This guy's already focused, blah, blah, blah. It got that positive energy that boosted the ump. It also made the teacher more likely to want to help me out. That's key. So they gave me additional resources. They gave me more attention. They gave me more tools I needed to succeed. And because of that, it boosted up my entire game. And then number three is to just do as many past paper questions as humanly possible, right? And the way you want to do this is you want to get to the aha moment as fast as you possibly can. That's key, as fast as you possibly can. So the aha moment is the switch you need to solve that problem, right? What is stopping you from achieving that solution? Truly ask you, right? Look, get your previous exam. You can do this right now. Literally open up your previous exam, look at the questions and ask yourself, why did I get this question wrong? What was stopping me from getting the right question here? What, like become curious. Why was I not able to do it? And then you realize that maybe it's a content thing. Maybe it's a, I haven't practiced enough thing. Maybe it's an intuition thing. Maybe it's a missing part of another topic. And then what you can slowly start to do is you can slowly start to remove those barriers. And then if you think of this kind of like a dam where you have all these walls going down this river, and then you just slowly start to remove the walls. Now all the creative energy, now all the productivity, all the success can flow down the river as you start to remove the barriers that is stopping your creative and true potential. All right. So you want to study with the intention of trying to remove those barriers. Okay. And I've never seen anybody anywhere on YouTube, just anywhere, explain it from this perspective, which is why I think I was able to truly master the subject and the entire IB. Because the thing is, if you do what everyone else is willing to do, you're going to get the mass majority of results. Okay. But which is basically zero. Okay. Most people don't achieve anything extraordinary in their life. Most people don't do anything that they look back and they're like, damn, this is amazing. In fact, most people get a mediocre score in the IB, right? If you just look at the IB curve, they curve the IB so that only a small percentage get a 45, right? I believe the number was like 0.3, something like that. So in order for you to become of the 0.3, you need to be willing to do what the other 99 point, what is that? 99.7% of people are not willing to do. Think about that. In order for you to get a 45 in the IB, you need to be willing to do the 99.7% of work that most students are not willing to do. And most students are not willing to do huge amounts of past papers. Most students are not willing to do past papers, not with the objective of doing the past paper, but with the objective of trying to identify what the aha moment is. Identifying that aha moment, eliminating it, and then letting the water flow. Most students are not willing to do that. And this is the big part. Most students are not willing to do that at scale. 
because the thing is that most students don't understand how much work is truly required to achieve extraordinary success, especially in chemistry exam. Because the amount of chemistry questions that I did in the past paper was not, I was not doing like four or five past paper questions per day, okay? That's not how much I was doing, okay? I was doing 500 marks of past paper questions every single day, which was probably like 100 and something past paper questions, okay? Just let that sink in for a second. 500, 500 every single day. That's the volume that is required. And mind you, if you do it with that perspective of the aha moments, this should not take you all day, okay? This should not take you 15 hours. This should take you three, three to four hours. And if you do that in two to three sprint sessions of just an hour and a half every single day of just focus, nonstop work, that's when you can make huge progress moving forward. All right, so the ultimate lesson here is when it comes to past paper questions, do them with the intention of, I'm going to do as many of them as humanly possible, and then be willing to do 99% of what other people are not willing to do. Keep that in mind, right? You can also think of it from this perspective. Why, why do you deserve to get a perfect 45? Okay, the question is you don't. The answer is you don't deserve to get a perfect 45. So since you don't deserve to get the perfect 45, that means you need to be willing to go through the pain of getting that 45, right? The perfect score, the perfect result, the top university is not rewarded to the person who, who half asses his way through the competition, okay? Because at the end of the day, university can think of it as a competition. No, the person who makes it at the end and wins and gets accepted to the top university approaches it from the perspective of understanding that they need to do difficult work because it's the challenging, consistent work that most students are not willing to do. And because of that, that's what shoots you ahead. All right, so take action on these right away tomorrow morning. Ask yourself, how can I pre-study for my chemistry class? Or how can I pre-study for my math class? Or how can I pre-study for any of this type of stuff, okay? When I was on the bus or on the car ride to school, I would just open up MSJ Chem and just watch some of the videos, understand a little bit what's going on, and then take some notes. So that's number one. Number two, actually use your class time effectively. This is where you can get massive returns on your attention, massive returns on your time. And then number three is just do past paper questions as much as humanly possible, volume with the intention of removing those aha moments. So do those three things and you'll be well on your path to achieving that level seven in chemistry. All right, thanks again for watching this video. So if you have any questions at all, please join the Discord community down below. I'm more than happy to help you out with that, as well as mentorship, and as well as just meeting other amazing current students who are currently going through the IB diploma and trying to get their perfect 45 score. So you can do that in the description down below. That's where I also do one-on-ones and mentorings and the rest of it. So go down below. Until next time, stay grizzly. I'll see you in the next video. Have a good day.